Hello, Dave here in the IQ Center with another Cinema 4D tutorial. Uh, today I want to talk about how to export your models and textures and get them uploaded to Sketchfab and working in Sketchfab and how to annotate in Sketchfab. So uh, let's jump into Cinema 4D and take a look. Um, I've got a test file here that's just got a couple of uh, uh, couple of objects, a couple of parametric objects that have been made editable with two different textures. So uh, I wanted to have two different textures so we could see how to handle multiple files. So what I've got here is uh, this platonic object and this cube and each one of them is colored with a separate material. And each one of these materials has a color channel and a bump channel. Um, so uh, let's take a look at that. Um, but one, one thing I want to point out first is that um, when I when I did the painting on this, it looked much better. And this is a, a, a common issue. You, you, you're in the painting, the, the body paint, and you finish your, um, finish your model and bring it back into the, into the editor, and all of a sudden your textures don't look as good as they did before. And that's because the, there's a default setting for the, um, the editor display. So if I click on one of these textures down in the, in the um, material manager, um, there's a, it brings up the, the, um, the properties for that material over here in the, um, in the attribute manager. And uh, in this there is a tab called editor. And you can see for this material, and this is by material. So for this material, we have uh, the, def the texture preview size is set to default. If we change that to a higher number, and usually I change this to whatever my actual textures are, and I think I have 2K textures here, so we're gonna make that 2048 by 2048. All of a sudden, everything looks better. It looks the way it did. So it's just that Cinema 4D is using a, a low, uh, low resolution texture preview to save on computer power. So uh, if you want to see what it's going to what's going to look like more accurately, you can uh, change that editor um, texture preview size. Um, uh, and so let's take a look at these textures. If I if I click on this, um, I can see that I have uh, if I go to the color tab, I can see that there is a texture in there and it's telling me it, it gives me the details about what it is. Here's the resolution. Here's an 8-bit color. And this is the the color name, so it's mattecolor.tiff. Now I have read, I've named these textures. The, one of them is the texture name is platonic, and the other texture is named box. But that doesn't carry through to the um, uh, to the texture name. Cinema 4D sort of um, makes default names for textures, and they just start matte color and matte color one, matte color two, and you can find out what the name of it is here. So the so my platonic is colored with matte color dot tiff, and um, and if I click here, uh, if I click on it, I can see the details of it here. Um, I can edit this image. I can locate it. So this is important. If you don't know where your textures are, you can you can click on your on your material, click on the texture, and then click locate image and it will show you where it is and if I go here I'll sh you'll, you'll be able to see something um, this is the name of my of my cinema 4d file and here are all of my textures now if you if you've named if you saved your cinema 4d file before you created um, your textures the textures will all be in this folder okay so I have I have two color channels and two bump channels so there'll be a there'll be a, a TIFF image for each um, for each uh, uh, material uh, and channel. I should say each channel. So uh, two color channels, two bump channels, um, and those are the things we're going to upload to Sketchfab. So um, let's go back here and um, um, and just make sure everything looks right. Um, so when I'm when I'm ready, I can export this file. So what I'm going to do is go uh, up to File, Export, and what we're going to do for this is Wavefront OBJ. And uh, there's a lot of uh, options here, um, and you can just leave most of this at default. Uh, for for um, uh, for Sketchfab, it doesn't really matter what the scale is. Um, it def this defaults to um, centimeters, uh, but um, 
it's asking me if I want to export materials and what the default material color should be. You can just leave all of this as at its default settings and click OK. And then it's going to ask me to export it somewhere. Um, and what I want to do is export it into the same folder as my Cinema 4D file and all of the um, the the uh, texture files because we're going to upload everything and I want those to be connected to each other. So. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and save this with even the same name. This is my Cinema 4D file is called test1.c4d. I'm going to call the obj file test1.obj. Hit save. So now if I were to go into that um, folder, you can see now we have an obj and mtl. This is this material file. This mtl file is called a material file, and it it helps to connect the um, the textures to the OBJ file. And we're going to upload those to, to Sketchfab. So let's hop over to Sketchfab. And in Sketchfab, we're going to need to log in. And you're going to use the credentials that I gave you in class, or whatever credentials you want to use for your um, for your Sketchfab upload. And then I'm going to click the Upload button in the upper right hand corner. And we can go to our um, to our folder that contains all of the all of the uh, textures and the Cinema 4D file and everything. And we're going to grab, holding the control key down to click all of my textures, the MTL file and the OBJ file. And we're going to drag all those into our upload and then I'm going to click Upload Files. So now it's going to upload to Sketchfab. And here, it, you, you can name this whatever you want. Um, um, and you can give it and you can give it a description. Um, and, and this would be helpful to put an actual description of your model if this is a, uh, for microanatomy and explain what, what, what we're looking at here. Um, you can you can add categories. Uh, this is probably maybe nature and uh, I'm not sure. Um, uh, you can give it give it that. You can give it a tag. You can call it Washington and Lee or um, IQ Center. Um, Um, and then this is this is just for helping people find it. And um, and if you don't mind people downloading this, um, you can click this download free. We only have a certain number of private files that we can use in this in this account. So um, uh, when you're uploading, if you don't mind people downloading it, go ahead and put the click free download. And and we can make it public. That's fine. And now it's um, it is working on on processing this file. Um, at any point, when we have all this information, we can hit save, and it will um, and and it will continue this in the background. We don't need to wait around for this. And if I and if I click this view my model, um, it will take me to the to the model page, but nothing will be available until it's processed. And this can take some time, depending on how complex your model is. And I'm going to just let this go and pause my recording until it is processed. Okay, so now the model is finished processing, and it comes up in the in the in the window, and you can see it, it's it's picked up a couple of things right. It's got the uh, the color in the right place, but what I don't see is I don't see any of the bump channel on this, and this is something that I've that I've come across from time to time. It doesn't um, it doesn't properly apply the uh, the textures, but we can fix that in here. So what I need to do is. Uh, we want to edit 3D settings. So edit properties is the properties that, that we set um, about the keywords and everything. But if we hit edit 3D settings, it'll bring us into this into this window. There's a couple things we want to set. Um, I I don't particularly like the uh, the white background. I usually choose a, um, uh, a a darker background. So if I click the at the bottom of this first tab. I click background. I can choose image, and I like this uh, um, 
back one flat or clean dark. Okay, so now to fix the um, the bump map, we go up to this uh, third tab over called materials. And under materials, this is where we we assign the materials for the different objects. So this this has two objects, and if I if I click in the in the actual um, scene window, you can see it highlights one or the other. And so um, I know we have a bump channel on this on this platonic, so I'm going to click it. And you can see that it shows me the base color up here, and that's working properly. It has matte color .tiff here as the texture. The, the what it doesn't have is it it, it has the normal uh, the bump map turned off. So if I turn that on, normal maps and bump maps do similar things, but they work a little different. They work with different colors. So um, we need to unspool this, and you see normal map is turned on and it's set to um, uh, to white, uh, we don't have to worry about that. We're gonna we're gonna just uh, choose bump map from this list, and then we're going to choose a texture. So if in this list will be all of the textures that um, uh, that we have uploaded, and uh, and I know from Cinema 4D that the that the name for the bump channel for that platonic is mattbump.tiff. So I click it. And you can see right now it's working. Um, I can I can kind of see those textures, but not very not very strongly. And that's because um, that's because Sketchfab controls the depth of this independently of Cinema 4D. So so I can I can take this slider in the normal bump map and and move that up or down to accentuate. This is sort of like the um, uh, the bump level in Cinema 4D, but uh, it's just in here. So there we go. Now that that looks right. I'm seeing I'm seeing some texture. And then I don't think the other uh, the cube actually has anything in the bump channel, but we can do that just to make sure. If I click this, now I want to turn the bump map on. I turn the bump map. I select my texture from here and that is matte bump 0. And uh, and now it's right. Okay, so now we've got we've got that set up. We can add other things to this too. Um, we can turn on a clear coat. Um, there's a if if we if you want this these things to be shiny, we can turn on a clear coat. And now you can see it's kind of sh it's reflecting things. And let me um, you can see that on this platonic, it's reflecting some some lights and some things that uh, I don't know where that's coming from, but that is actually in the lighting. So this scene is being lit by a an environment. So uh, in this this in this case, the environment is an industrial room. We can change this to all sorts of things. It can be a um, I kind of like uh, just a studio, and um, but you know this this can be um, any sort of environment. All right, and. Uh, so now I've turned the clear coat on for for the for the platonic, but not the. So this is by by object. So if I go back to materials and click the cube, and turn on, um, I can turn on clear coat, and then it will also have a. It'll also be reflective. Um, the other thing that that's kind of interesting, maybe for these uh, uh, for these biological tissues, is to turn on uh, subsurface scattering. Um, so if I click the platonic and turn it on, what it does is it, it kind of gives it a. Um, it's it looks like light is shining through it. Um, it is sort of what happens to skin to make it look um, uh, like skin. It uh, light enters through it and, it and it scatters underneath the surface. And this is sort of a um, a, uh, a trick of the eye as well, but um, uh, it might. It, this might be. This might look kind of good on some of on some of the tissues in your. Um, so give that a try. All right. Next, we want to put annotations on this. So you're you've got a you've got a complex model that you want to put. Um, you want to tell people what um, what they're looking at. That is in this tab up here called annotations. So if I click it. Um, it gives me the instructions. Double click on your model to add an annotation. And, and the way this works is the annotation will take the user 
to a certain view. So if you have sex, like some details, you can zoom way in on something. And and when I put when I put an annotation in here, it's going to um, drive the user to this particular orientation and zoom level as soon as they click the the um, the annotation. So I'm going to double click right here, and I'm going to call this um, cell texture and So now I've got a, a title and a description and, and created a, a view. So and I click OK. Now, whenever somebody clicks on number one, it's going to take them to that view and show them the, the, um, uh, the annotation. And that's, as, that's as, as hard as it is. You just, you just go around, label everything. And for, um, for microanatomy models, you're going to probably put in quite a few. And these are going to be very descriptive. And uh, um, and then when you're when you're finished, so you've you've put in a bunch of annotations, you've adjusted your material so that they're working correctly. Um, we have to save settings, and let me give you one other tip. There's a default view, so if, so um, you want to orient this in the in the view that you want people to see when they when they load your model, and it, so. Give it a nice a nice angle and a nice zoom level so that they can see the whole thing and you can click save view and that will um, save this as the as the default view and we can save settings and then we can publish our model once we publish our model you see this little um, uh, web address here this is how people can get to it so you can send that to anybody anybody with, with, a, with the web browser can can click it and view it. So I'm going to copy that and just go to a new tab and I'll show you what I mean. So if I just paste that that in there, this will come up. It will come up at the default view that I set. It'll take a second to load the textures and, um, and now I can click annotations. And if you have multiple annotations, the user can also um, cycle through the annotations by clicking the arrows here. You can make this full screen. You can escape to get out of full screen. And that's it. Um, uh, that, that is how to export from Cinema 4D and upload into Sketchfab and fix your textures when they, uh, when they don't work. All right, thanks for watching.